Hello friends and followers, this is Adam, Watu-K99, and I'm here at the Williamsburg Transportation Center in Williamsburg, Virginia, and we are getting ready to board uh, the train out to Philadelphia in about 30-40 minutes or so, and uh, man, I'm really looking forward to this trip, to be a whole lot of food, going to be some baseball, some museums, it's going to be a pretty fantastic trip, can't wait to share everything with you, check you soon. It's Watson K99. All right, so we are here at Reading Terminal Market after a six hour train ride and a pretty rough <laughs> commute to get from 30th Street down here to 11th Street. We are here at Reading Terminal Market. And my first stop, Tommy the Knicks, known for their famous roast pork sandwich. As a matter of fact, Adam Richman, if you watch Man vs. Food, actually did a tournament of sandwiches around the country and he picked this the roast pork as his favorite. All right, so let's get a look. Here's the pork. We got the sharp provolone nestled against the bread and the broccoli rob. Not a big broccoli rob guy here, but I got to do it the old school Philly way. I wanted the broccoli rob over the spinach. Let's take a bite. Wow. Bread has a nice little crust on it. Super juicy pork. A little bit like it's more like ham actually. It's a very thinly sliced roast pork. Love the sharpness of the provolone. Broccoli Rob definitely adds some nice bitterness, but it helps add some nice bite to it. So everything, it's a very simple sandwich, but it all contrasts, it all comes together very, very well. Man, that was a that is a that is a good bite right here. Mm. I'm gonna have another one, excuse me. Boy, I'm glad there were some empty seats at the counter because I can tell you the right terminal market on a Friday afternoon is buzzing. There's barely a seat to be found, but Herschel's does have some separate seating if you're looking to just eat by yourself and uh, eat up there, eat their food. They got a couple of counters, just a couple bar stools here, and I was able to snag one of them. So we're going to dig into the pastrami, which by the way is hand carved. So I'm going to give you a little view up close here. So look how thick that is. It looks a lot like Katz's uh, over in Brooklyn. So and for what they say, they're about the best uh, deli outside of New York. So I've been to a few, and I'm glad that the uh, rye bread's got the caraway seeds in there too. So let's take a bite. That's a rich bite of pastrami, baby. I'll tell you right now. Wow. <laughs> that's the advantage of. See, that's why they gotta give you two pickles. Not just, I got one here, but they gotta give you two pickles just so you can cut through all the fat of the pastrami. But man, it is juicy, it is moist. You don't even need che teeth to chew this pastrami. It's, it's really, really good. Bread's a little firm. It's not squishy soft, but it's still pretty good quality bread. Um, I've had some better rye bread, but uh, I've, again, I like the caraway in there. So, yeah, I don't think it's going to be too tough for me to, to take this bad boy down. Catch you in the field.
hit up Spring Garden and uh, Fifth, and over there was Yards Brewery, one of the more well-known breweries in Philadelphia. I tried about six or seven beers, and you know, I tend to go towards the IPAs, sort of the middle-bodied IPAs. You know, I like them a little more on the hazy side, not too on the not too piney, really. And they had a sampler of uh, four different uh, IPAs that were like that. But you know what, when it's about 65, 70 degrees, it's overcast and it's been raining most of the day, you're not exactly looking for a tropical feel. <laughs> so what actually got me the most was probably the Brawler, which is sort of a mild English ale. Uh, that was pretty good, got a 20 ouncer for five bucks, really good deal. Got some peach habanero wings, got six wings for six bucks, pretty good deal, especially uh, for a happy hour, you know, you can't really go wrong with that. And uh, then I took the train back down to City Hall, so now I'm basically right smack in the middle of downtown Philly, and I'm heading over to Whiskey Kitchen uh, for my next happy hour, and I gotta tell you, they got the Half Acre Daisy Cutter beer over there from Chicago for five bucks. I gotta tell you, I have not had one of those beers in about eight or nine years. I gotta make sure to get a Daisy Cutter. So what I got was vanilla bean and caramelized vanilla ice cream. I got so I got two flavors. Plus I had peanut butter sauce and salted almonds, and I got free rainbow sprinkles because I got a train pass. So I'm gonna give you a little uh, zoom in on what that looks like. All right, this looks uh, it's pretty huge, and I can tell you this: it wasn't cheap. Not the biggest dessert guy in the world, but this does look pretty awesome. So let's have our first bite. Mm. Whoa. That peanut butter sauce is legit. Mm. Perfect blend of like sweet, a hint of sweet, but it's like a really roasty, peanutty flavor. And with the banana as well, I figured peanut butter and banana would go really, really well, plus the crunch of the almonds. Man, that is a dynamite combination. I'm not sure I'm gonna have any more dessert the rest of the weekend, but whew, yeah, that, uh, that ice cream, Franklin found. They're on point, guys, on point. Well, it is Saturday morning, and man, oh man, I got a very good night of sleep, which was sorely, sorely needed. I mean, to think, Friday I got up at 3.30 in the morning, and it was basically uh, nonstop until about 8, 8.30 at night, you know. It, it was a little bit earlier to turn in than I thought I would be doing, but you know what? It, it was the right thing to do. You know, ate quite a bit, drank quite a bit, and uh, I didn't need to completely... Uh, you know, beat myself up <laughs> so that I would be completely useless uh, for Saturday. So, hey, Franklin Fountain, fantastic ice cream. It uh, finished me off uh, very, very well. I uh, came back to the room and uh, made a very smart decision <laughs> by not going to Citizens Bank Park for the absolute disgrace that uh, that took place in that stadium last night. But, hey, just the latest, right? But I will be there today with uh, 1,500 Mets fans with the Seven Line Army. I am uh, looking forward to that. Not sure quite how good of a game it's going to be. I'm just relieved that I don't have to watch uh, Zach Wheeler pitch in person for the Phillies. So what we're going to do now is, well, I'm about one and three quarter mile away, uh, the hotel is, from the Philadelphia Museum of Art, which is also where the Rocky statue is. So... I uh, took my pre-energy workout, my pre-workout energy drink, and I'm going to run from the hotel to the steps, you know, take a picture or two with the Rocky statue, and then we're going to run back 
And then I've got a museum, uh, museum little shop in mind uh, that I'm pretty excited to uh, to hit up. Then after that, I think we're gonna. Uh, I do have a cheesesteak place that I'm gonna go to, and then from there we're going to hit up uh, Xfinity Live, hang with the Seven Line Army in the early part of the afternoon, and then the game starts at four o'clock. And then I'm really excited to go to Ralph's Italian Restaurant. Hopefully, I can find a place to charge the phone somewhere along the way because, uh, yeah, once I leave around uh, nine nine thirty in the morning, I'm probably not gonna be back in the room for at least uh, twelve hours. I dare say. All right. Let's uh, hope Saturday's a great day. Well, you know what? Let's just make it a great day. about to get ready to uh, head out the door for most of the day, it looks like. And uh, man, breakfast in a shower hit the spot. Now, this wasn't the most advanced breakfast buffet I've ever seen, but hey, they had bacon. That's a good start. Uh, they did have uh, the waffle iron. I passed on the waffle. I went with the bacon, a banana, and had a post-workout drink. That was it. Uh, no eggs, you know, not even the fake uh, powdered eggs. They didn't have any eggs, but uh, they did have the frozen uh, hash browns, the ones that you had, you know, back in elementary school. Sometimes that would be the highlight of your lunch. Yeah, they did have uh, the frozen uh, tater tots, so uh, they had the tater tots. Uh, I did want to tell this one story. This is pretty funny. So I checked out the hotel, and this just uh, goes to show you get what you pay for. And I'm cool with the hotel, you know, one fifty a night, perfect location. I'm not upset about it. it. It just goes to show you some hotels offer certain things and some don't. So I'm checking in and I ask them, do you have a fitness center? And they say, oh, I'm sorry, it's out of order. Front desk clerk tells me. Now, I've heard of a machine being out of order in the fitness center, but the whole center apparently is out of order. Well, so be it. So I said, well, that means you don't have any water available because, you know, I like to drink a good amount of water during the day. And they said, well, we have an ice machine. We have a vending machine. I'm like... Okay, I guess I'm going to have to be really patient here, put the ice in the bottle and let it melt overnight. I mean, I don't know. And they said, well, you know, in the breakfast area on the second floor, we do have a hot water that's available throughout the day. And I'm like, hmm, okay, so I have to fill up the hot water and put that in the bottle. I could refrigerate it overnight because I do have a fridge and we'll let it go from there. So I decide, okay, it's a pretty good idea. So I get my uh, about 32 or 33 ounce blender bottle. It's a really good size one. I uh, really like it too, because I like the green color on it. And the bottle is too big to fit under the tap for the hot water. So I'm thinking, okay, we'll have to get a little creative here. So I push on the button of the hot water heater, and I fill up a little paper cup that's used, you know, for hot tea. And it just dribbles out, one, one thousand, two, one thousand. It's like I'm in the Sahara Desert. The water is so hard to come by. So it, it slowly dribbles its way out into the cup. I fill it up, and then I pour it inside the bottle. It's like 1788 out here. <laughs> fill up the water, pour in the bottle. Fill up the cup, pour in the bottle. Fill the cup, pour in the bottle. It took five or six times, uh, almost ten minutes, to fill up the water bottle with hot water. Hey, when you when you want something, you know you'll get a little bit creative if that's what it takes. So, uh, just a little funny thing that uh, that's been going on here today. So, heading off to the Faith and Liberty Discovery Center in a few minutes. Can't wait to check it out.
just got to tell you something. The uh, Faith and Liberty Discovery Center in Philadelphia, if you ever have a chance to come down here, you got to go to the museum. I know there's a whole lot of free places to go to. This one, it does cost 10 bucks to get in uh, for adults. They have good rates, obviously, for seniors and for kids. But, man, it is well worth it to come in and uh, go there for an hour, hour and a half, and really, really take it in. It's fantastic. The uh, And, you know, I really like interactive museums, and it absolutely was. There was music. I mean, there were there were books, there were displays of great uh, leaders over uh, the course of American history, some of whom I never heard of. Um, you know, you had Billy Graham, you had Martin Luther King, Jane Addams, but then you had different abolitionists from way back when. You know, it was really fantastic. So I definitely want to give them a recommendation. I was the only one who was in the building for the first hour, and uh, I want to give them a little bit of love because they really deserve it. Well, I uh, walked down three blocks and we're at O Brother Philly on Market Street. Now, this is not one of the well-known cheesesteak places, but I am looking forward to trying it. The reviews on Yelp have been great, four and a half stars, so that uh, holds a lot of water with me. And uh, so I ordered a uh, cheesesteak with onions, mushrooms, provolone on a seeded roll. And its uh, they told me it's going to take about 15 minutes, so it is going to take a little bit of time. Uh, so looking forward to trying it. It's a different place, but I like finding more of the... Uh, under the radar places as opposed to all the touristy ones and you know who knows uh, how it might turn out so check back with you once the cheesesteak okay so the cheesesteak has arrived now as i told you we did the seeded roll right here we got the provolone the steak the onions and the mushrooms so we are going to take a bite out of this i can already tell this roll's got some crust on it which is so so important and the roll's even a little bit warm so i do like that they definitely warm the bread on the grill it's some good stuff all right let's take a bite let's see how this is Love that bread, very, very legit. It's more of a mild provolone, not as sharp as it was with uh, with the next on the roast pork sandwich. Beef's pretty juicy. Uh, didn't get a big bite of the onions and mushrooms. The onions are definitely chopped, uh, very fine in this cheesesteak. I think for me, I'm gonna add just a little bit of salt and pepper on it. Uh, I, would, I would say this is a pretty solid cheesesteak though. Yeah, good place. I don't think a whole lot of people know about it, but uh, I think over Brother Philly, it's one of the better ones I've had uh, in Philly. So, uh, yeah. Mm, cheers. Yeah, that's cedar roll. Mm, there's some out of cedar roll. I like it. One more bite. Xfinity Live right now. I'm in the Sports Complex, Citizens Bank Park, Lincoln Financial Field, the Wells Fargo Center. They're all right here. And I stopped here into uh, Victory, Victory Beer Hall, tried a couple beers, and I gotta tell you, this Cloud Walker, it's a juicy, hazy IPA. Oh man, crushable. It's got some nice uh, juice, some nice citrus in there, but it's still got some good depth on the back end of it. It's definitely not a watery, wimpy beer by, uh, by any stretch. This one's really good. Uh, Nine bucks a shot's quite a bit, especially when we got four dollar Michelob Ultras. <laughs> but man, oh man, this is a good quality beer, the uh, Cloud Walker. So yeah, Victory did it well on that one. Uh, I'm just hoping Chicky and Pete's opens up down the down the way, uh, the other side of the hall. I want to try some of their crab fries already. Let's go, Chicky and Pete's on it. All right, we are back, and uh, Chicky and Pete's got those crab fries ready to go. Got the cheese sauce too, so I've been hearing about these for years. Let's take a dip. Let's see how these are. Mm. Pringle cut definitely holds the seasoning really well. I like that cheese sauce, man. I, you put that on, you could probably put that cheese sauce on a car bumper and it would taste good. If I'm being honest, but uh, fries can be a little hotter temperature-wise. I definitely like the seasoning on them. Yeah, just I raise temperature a little bit. I gotta be honest. Twelve bucks for a cup of fries. Really good, but it is a pretty decent amount of money. So, uh, yeah, I like the fries, but I think if you go to the actual restaurant, it's like eight bucks for this. So, yeah, you get overcharged at these types of places. But I got to try the chicken and peas crab fries. All right, we're going mechanical bull here. Don't get cocky. 
this is slow speed. Come on. This will be on YouTube. Victory for the New York Mets. They defeat the Philadelphia Phillies 4-2, taking the second game in this three-game divisional series. You know, it was a good, clean, crisp game, which the Mets needed. You know, there have been too many times when they would play poor defense, not come through in a big spot, and uh, they definitely did those things uh, today. But uh, with, with the uh, matchup being uh, Christopher Sanchez starting for the Phillies against Max Scherzer, that's a game you expect to win. The Mets did. Going to be a little bit more challenging on Sunday with Carlos Carrasco opposing Zach Wheeler. So uh, I am back in the room. I'm heading off to dinner at Ralph's Italian Restaurant, one of the oldest Italian restaurants, not just in Philadelphia, but in the United States. So we'll see how that goes. And then for the rest of the night, who knows what might happen.
oldest Italian restaurant in America. So they make their own mozzarella cheese from scratch. So they brought me some bread, some nice seeded bread. I got the fresh mozzarella cheese and some roasted peppers as an appetizer. Meatballs are on their way. I want to put all of this on a little bit of bread. See how this is. Let's go. Spot on. Mm. Great olive oil. Peppers have a little bit of sweetness. That cheese tastes so fresh. Mm. I'll use a little bit of basil. Mm. And that bread? Delicious. Alright, well I still got a few peppers and a little bit of mozzarella left, but the meatballs have arrived. So we got two meatballs, as you have uh, as you see in the picture, with a little dollop of ricotta. Not a big ricotta fan, but I will have a little bit of that along with the uh, gravy, just to see how it is with the ricotta. Let's see. Mm. Oh. Very tender. I love that sauce. I have a lot of bad ones. This one was made with some love. You can tell. This is made right. It's a little hearty. I think it's got some bones cooked in there, too. Thank you. Yeah, that's a good, good meatball. Really, really good. Yeah. Shoot, I just, give me like a sub roll, a couple of those meatballs. I'm good right there. Wow. All right, and we got the chicken capriccioso. It took about 25, 30 minutes for it to come out. It's got chicken breast, mozzarella cheese, their tomato plum sauce. It's got eggplant. It's got prosciutto in it. A little bit of white wine. I had some Parmesan cheese to it. So, yeah, it, it, from, from the top, it looks like chicken parm with some eggplant on top. But I got to tell you, this is, wow. Definitely got some tang on the back with that white wine. Man, oh man. This is like chicken parm and eggplant parm kind of came together. It was taken up just like another level with the addition of the prosciutto and the white wine. Wow. Fantastic chicken dish. And of course, I got some extra bread because I'm going to have a lot of uh, a lot of sauce slash gravy left over. You need some, B, you know, you need some BDFP. Bread for different purposes. We know how to do it. Well, it is Sunday morning. It is a beautiful, albeit very hot, early morning here in Philadelphia. First sign of uh, blue skies that we've really seen. So, walking the Benjamin Franklin Bridge over to New Jersey and then uh, pretty much right back. So, the bridge is uh, pretty much right behind me and uh, we're going to take some pictures along the way. I think we're going to have some nice clear views. So, let's see what there is to see. Sunday morning and I am right now at 8 and Market so so far today we walked the Benjamin Franklin Bridge which is uh, doing quite a number on my feet right now I gotta tell you <laughs> 
Uh, we went to the Benjamin Franklin Museum. It was a pretty good museum, um, but not a whole lot to it. I was out of there really in about 15 to 20 minutes. And uh, that was about the end of that. So now I'm at 8th and Market Street. I'm uh, waiting to take the 47 bus down to Angelo's, which I hear is one of the best sandwich uh, shops in Philadelphia. I hear they make amazing pizza, but you gotta get like a huge, huge pizza. They don't do it by the slice. So got my cash ready to go, because they are cash only. So uh, Angelo's, here we come. All right, so I ordered two sandwiches. I got their traditional Italian hoagie. I'm gonna save that one for a little bit later. I figured, you know, six hour train ride, needs something to eat on the train. So I think that's a good idea. And we got the JYS, the Junkyard Special, and that is a sandwich uh, made in Philly at a deli that doesn't exist anymore. But I've actually made it a couple of times at home. So it's got turkey, prosciutto, roasted peppers, sauteed spinach, fresh basil, uh, dried oregano, uh, fresh mozzarella, and provolone. Fantastic combination for a sandwich, but this is the first time I get to actually have one in Philly uh, So they told me it would take about 15 to 20 minutes to get those sandwiches ready to go uh, They have a, a young lady. I'm gonna call her the designated yeller who comes out just screams our name Just waiting for my name to come next I gotta tell you, I thought I could make a pretty good junkyard special at home, but look at this. Whew. Look at all the colors. Isn't this sandwich just beautiful? I already tell this bread's got a good amount of crunch on it, looks soft as can be, good balance of meat, cheese, vegetable. I can't talk anymore. Ten out of ten. Wow. Love the turkey, the fat of the prosciutto, the spinach and peppers cuts right through the fat. Fresh basil, oh, I love fresh basil on an Italian hoagie, on an Italian sandwich, just lightens the whole thing up. You get a little pungency of the dried herbs too. And you got a good crunchy seeded roll. You, you, you can't beat this, you just cannot beat this. Mm. Mm. Can't wait for the Italian later. Ooh, so good. And we are back home in Newport News, Virginia. The train got into Williamsburg about an hour later than anticipated. Uh, so I got to tell you, it's a little bit late to eat a sub sandwich. I think I'm going to eat that Italian sandwich from Angelo's. I'll have that Monday for lunch, and I will record my reaction to it. But hey, it is definitely not too late for a dessert. So as I told you earlier, I got half a dozen cookies from famous 4th Street Cookie Company in the Reading Terminal Market. Now, I've actually been there one before. So I'll tell you the story. I did a walking tour of uh, Philadelphia, a walking food tour. And one of the stops was this cookie place. And all of us got a chocolate chip cookie. Well, if you know me, you know that I can't do chocolate. So they were gracious enough to give me a sugar cookie, and it was one of the best sugar cookies I ever had. Super soft, you know, a little bit of crunch on the outside, just a tiny hint, plenty of granulated sugar on top to give you that nice little sugary sensation. Really, really good, so I wanted to go back and try a couple of other cookies. So I got half a dozen. I got, let's see, two oatmeal raisin, two snickerdoodle, a peanut butter, which has actual peanut butter chips in it, and an uh, oatmeal orange cranberry cookie. Pretty unique combination, but I will uh, try that one down the road. But right now, I've got a snickerdoodle cookie right here. 
which looks absolutely fantastic. Got nice thickness on it. I can see, uh, again, some of the sugar on the outside. And, of course, got to have milk because what is a cookie without milk? So just uh, here's to you, Philadelphia. Let's try this one. Mmm. Good balance of cinnamon and sugar. Super, super soft. Nice size too, not too big, not too small. Mm. Now one of the worst things you could do with one of these types of cookies is over bake it so there's no chew on it. This is super chewy, but the cookie really holds its shape. It doesn't just completely fall apart. Man, I bet this would be really good heated up with maybe a little bit of vanilla ice cream on top. Oh, may make a little uh, sandwich out of it with two of the cookies. Very, very good. I'll tell you what, Philadelphia's got its pros, it's got its cons, but one thing is for sure, you can't deny how great their food is. Okay, it is Monday morning. I am back at work and on my lunch break. So I guess this is kind of like the epilogue uh, now that I'm uh, back in Virginia. Uh, so the cookie last night was really, really good, but we still have one more sandwich from Angelo's left to try, and it is their Italian hoagie. Now, let's get a little shot. Oh, there it is. So this sandwich, this is a little bit of a different Italian uh, than what I'm used to. So we got Genoa salami, hot copy coal, Gabigool, Capicola, there are many ways to pronounce it. Dad, take your pick. Uh, it says imported ham, mild provolone, and cotagena, or cotagena. I gotta be honest with you, I've never heard of that before. From what I understand, it's like a, it's a smoked Italian sausage. So, uh, now obviously the sandwich is a little bit squished a little bit because it did travel in my backpack overnight, but uh, we have saved it up for today. So let's dig in and take a bite, see what we think. Mm. Oh, this half's for you. Wow. Mm. Man, I love that bread. It's a little bit soft because it sat in the fridge overnight. It doesn't have the crispiness that it did yesterday. But this also has the uh, the lettuce, the tomato, th thinly shaved red onion, some dry herbs on top. Um, it's not it's not the most loaded Italian sandwich that I've ever seen. But the blend of the meats and cheeses is really good. I like the proportion of the ingredients. Nothing really overwhelms anything else. Uh, not really spicy on it, It's uh, but it's very, very fresh. Still tastes really, really good. I got to say, the JYS is uh, probably my favorite. Man, that sandwich yesterday was fantastic. This is still really, really, really good, though. So, all right, get out of here. I got lunch to eat. Well, I guess that concludes our Philadelphia weekend trip. A whole lot of food, a little bit of baseball, and a good amount of Mets pain. I'm glad I got to miss the two losses. But I will say a few things in regards to Philadelphia. I expected uh, to basically be treated uh, terribly by a lot of people. And I got to say, you know, a lot of the people, they were really cool. I guess it's just one of those things. If you don't start with them, they won't start with you. Or maybe the fact that the Mets have been as pitiful as they are, they just kind of felt sorry for for, the, for all the Mets fans. It's the only thing I can really think of. Uh, but yeah, the people there were, were pretty cool, so I can't complain about that. Food unbelievable, enough said about that. On the negative side, a whole lot of smoking. Uh, the homelessness was was rough. Um, in a good amount, in a good part of the city, especially like where I was staying in Chinatown, it felt like some neighborhood in Queens or in Brooklyn where you had all the you know, filled black garbage bags laying on the sidewalk just waiting to be collected. You know, you don't see that in too many places, but it felt like a little taste of New York and Philadelphia with all the garbage getting ready to be collected. So, you know, uh, will I return one day? You never know. I think there's a chance, but uh, definitely the food was the highlight of this trip. I mean, I just wrote about a dozen Yelp reviews, four or five stars pretty much all the way through. And uh, hey, it was a good getaway weekend, something that I sorely needed. And uh, let's see where our travels take us next.